Christmas. I'd like to introduce my business partner and friend, um, sort of Sally. Can you turn this down a little bit, please? Oh, that's right. I've got a bit of an echo. Thank you. So, in the next 25 minutes, we're going to show you how we are making between 40 and 50,000 pounds on every deal using instalment contracts. And we're going to show you how you could be doing that without taking out a mortgage. We're going to show you how you can do that without running a credit check, without finding a tenant, without paying for voids or repairs, without paying for maintenance. And in fact, we're going to show you how you can do that without any experience whatsoever. So before we start, a little bit about myself. Very quickly, um, I set up an IFA practice back in the late 80s and I became known as what uh, you might refer to today as a creative mortgage broker. And I learned very quickly how to use creative financing methods, which enabled me to buy property using no money down strategies, similar to how Fraser's done it. Uh, that's enabled me to build a multi-million pound portfolio over the last 25 years. Um, and that produces a net rental income of well into six figures. I manage that portfolio myself today, but for the last three years, since the credit crunch, um, mortgages became more difficult to get hold of back then, I decided to focus my attention on instalment contracts. And over the last three years, myself and Masood have become experts on instalment contracts. We've completed them on over 40 deals, and uh, we're hoping to show you this evening how we've done it. <coughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, for those who haven't seen me before, my name is uh, Mesut Sali. Um, I came to this country in 2005, August 29th, I'll never forget that, because I came here with £825, and next I have to pay my tuition fees to Richmond American International University, and they were exactly £800. When I paid them the next day, on the 30th of August, I had only £25 left in my wallet. So what do you do when you don't speak English very good? I speak better now. <laughs> and you don't have any friends. You're new to a country that you haven't before. And uh, you're a student. Well, I just take it by the scruff of the neck. So I said, I'm going to make it work. I have to make it work. So uh, since then, I started learning more and more about property. So kind of a long story short, um, I... Um, started uh, reading books about property, going to events like you guys have come here today and uh, talking to people. And fortunately I met Doug at one of the property meetings and uh, we started talking about creative ways of buying property and more profitable ways of uh, generating uh, cash from property. So since then we joined forces and been working together. As Doug said, we have done over 40 deals and we'll show you today how profitable they are and you'll be wowed. We have recorded our two-day workshop in November for those of you who would like to see the recording and um, for those of you who couldn't attend that, you can purchase that at the back of the room, so Graham will help you with that. Thank you. So let's uh, have a look of an overview of this evening, say what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about why you should be using installment contracts in today's marketplace. We're going to show you how we are making massive profits from every deal. We're going to show you some real life studies, case studies, some actual deals that we've actually completed on deals on the table. Um, we're going to show you how we buy and control property using a single document, 12 page legal document, very, very simple to use. And then we're going to show you our offer to you. So first of all, first of all, Masood, why should we be using instalment contracts in today's market? Um, ladies and gentlemen, installment contracts are the most profitable strategy in today's market by far. <coughs> They're even more profitable than the so-called multi houses multiple occupation. We have uh, three HMOs in Canterbury, they don't net as good cash flow as from a one bedroom flat we have in Gravesend. We'll show you here. So, they also present more opportunities for us, the investors, they give us the flexibility of structuring deals in a way that we wouldn't structure them traditionally. They're a unique money-making strategy where you basically are the person in the middle, you buy a house, 
from a seller and make it available to a buyer, usually a first time buyer, and you help them get on the prop together. And for that reason, you get paid an upfront deposit, you get paid monthly payments, and you receive a very large backhand um, profits. It also doesn't have the usual tenant problems that come with um, being a landlord. You don't have the maintenance problems and you don't have the daily management of your portfolio. It saves you a lot of time as well. The installment contracts also take the, uh, the problem of um, rate increases away. Because an installment contract means that you move in a, you're moving a buyer into the property, the buyer exchanges contracts with the seller, with the vendor. It becomes the buyer, not the tenant. Therefore, there are no um, problems with rate increases because if the rates increase, then the buyer's instalment increases likewise. Unlike a, a rental, if the rates increase on your mortgage, it's not always possible to increase your rent immediately. And quite often we may move into negative cash flow. Some people will already be uh, experiencing negative cash flow. I certainly do with some of my portfolio. Some people may be close to negative cash flow. If there's a half a percent raise in the interest rates, some of the people here today may be experiencing negative cash flow. Installment contracts takes that away completely. So, how we're making massive profits from every deal. We're going to show you a couple of examples. The first is uh, what we call a babysit. A babysit has nothing to do with children or babies. It's basically we babysit the property. We babysit the property and we babysit the mortgage payments on the property on behalf of the vendor. So we don't buy the property, we don't take it into our ownership. And when we babysit a property, it normally means that we don't pay any money for that. This particular property in Gravesend is a six bedroom detached house. It had a tenant in it and it also had mushrooms growing in the uh, cellar. It needed some updating, some renovation. So the rental income wasn't as great as it could have been. The owner was just wanted to get shot of the problem. He had a small amount of equity tied up and he asked us if we could take the problem away from him uh, and turn the property around, sell the property, pay off his mortgage uh, and move him away. So what did we do? We said we found some buyers. We started marketing the property actually. The property had a tenant in and whilst the tenant was in there, we started marketing the property. We gave a notice to the tenant and said it's the tenant. Unfortunately you have to live at the end of your and it says approach, so you have to leave the property and the owner of the property wants to sell the property and as he can't maintain and, um, and he can't take care of the mushrooms. So what we have to do is find a buyer that will take the house, that will take the mushrooms and all the repairs away, so and, um, you have to move on. So we found a buyer, um, they were a family, the Collins from um, Ireland. So, um, Southern Ireland, Dublin. Yeah. Dublin. But they had kennels, they had dog kennels that they wanted to sell and moved to London. But they couldn't sell the kennels because the property market in uh, Ireland is so um, so depressed. Uh, it will take them longer to sell it. It has been on the market for two years, they couldn't sell it. So we agreed with them, okay, what sort of deposit do you have to move in? They said, well, £25,000. Actually, the £25,000 deposit we took from them, you know, that from the picture when I was presented, remember the cash on the table? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so we haven't paid any money for the property. We've taken twenty-five thousand pounds up front from the buyer, cash flow. Uh, we agreed on the monthly payments of fourteen hundred and fifty pounds. So we have a net cash flow of seven hundred and fifty pounds after we pay the mortgage to Santander, the existing mortgage that we babysit on behalf of the owner. They're likely to move out or ca cash out when we signed a five-year contract with the family. They're already two years in, so we will cash flow forty-five thousand pounds net, no expenses. So in five years' time, after we cash flow £45,000 from the income after paying our mortgage payment, that's net, we've taken £25,000 up front, there'll be a final payment to make at the back end. Uh, how much will that be? Well, after we pay the equity that the seller has in the property, we'll net with £15,000 back end. So on a property that we didn't pay any money for, how much are we going to uh, net on that particular deal? Well, we made £85,000 even without touching the mushrooms. And without a tenant, with no maintenance problems. Uh, so example two of a babysit, same principle. Bob from Dart Dartford. This is again another landlord uh, who came to us through a state agent friend of ours. He has been on the market for 12 months. He hated to be a landlord. This gentleman didn't like property. I know you all do love properties, 
this gentleman was a life property. So uh, he had a property that was in bad state of repair. Uh, it was okay, but it wasn't great. So um, he said, well, I want to get rid of this property. And we told him, look, Bob, if we get simply mortgage on behalf of you and pay it off in the future, how much do you have to walk away with this? On this property, he said, fifteen thousand pounds. He said, well, if we can pay this fifteen thousand pounds any time in the next seven years, would that be all right for you? He said, great, just do that. Where do I leave the keys? He said, oh, wow, well, okay. He said, put them on the table. So we started marking the property. Um, it was vacant. We didn't have any tenants, and within fourteen days, we had a buyer. Buyers actually were um, two African uh, families. They were Nigerians. Um, um, husband was a trainee doctor and the wife was a nurse. Their income was quite good. And uh, they've been renting for the last seven years. They wanted to own their own family home. And they love the fact that they come away with £5,000 deposit. £5,000 deposit for the buyer to move into a property with no mortgage. Where else offers that? Where else you can buy a house with £5,000 deposit? Do you suspect that they paid a little bit over market value for the property? Did they buy over market value for the property? Slightly. Yeah. 15,000 over market value. They were happy to do that because we offered them a unique opportunity to move into the property for £5,000 and they didn't need to go to the bank and get a mortgage, which they couldn't do anyway. Well, they had a quite cheap mortgage with JP Morgan and um, we charged about £805, I think, a month. They were paying us, the family, and we netted about £480 net cash flow from this after we paid JP Morgan's monthly payment. So again, we expect them to cash out with us in around about five years' time. On average, everybody cashes out in three to five years. So after five years, we will net 28,800, having taken 5,000 up front. And the back end payment, once Remember, they cash Remember, we out, promised to pay Bob 15,000 pounds on completion. So after we deduct the 15,000 pounds, we're going to receive 37,000 pounds back end profit at the end of the five year contract but we have to pay £15,000 of that back to Bob, so we net £22,000. How much is it still worth? £55,800. How net. much did we pay for this? Zero. How many tenants have we put in there? Zero. How much have we spent on maintenance? Nothing. Thank you. How much did you spend on Lloyd? Uh, normal, ch normal charge, it's a normal conveyance. Standard conveyance. So you need a standard conveyancing solicitor or exactly. conveyancer. No <laughs> specialist solicitors or conveyances involved or necessary. This is not, uh, and there's nothing to do with options. So you don't need a special solicitor who knows about options. This is not options, this is installment contracts. The third, maybe sit very quickly because we don't have a lot of time, uh, was another Bob. He was just about to be repossessed and uh, he needed 1,800 pounds to pay to his lender, GE Money, to stop the repossession. We agreed to pay his £1,800 on his behalf to stop the repossession, allowed him some time in the property before he packed his bags to move on to his sister's house where he was going to go and live, and we decided to babysit the property. So, we served very quickly with some figures. Well, we received £7,000 exterior, that's the day when me and Doug went to the inspector property. Actually, Doug had a wheel around the corner. Oh, I did. <laughs> anyway, well, the, the property was in great state. It was quite um, in bad condition. But again, yeah, we moved the family from Dagenham all the way to Kent. They love the fact that they can own a three-bedroom house and they wanted for one bedroom for each of their children. So they gave us seven thousand pound deposit, and um, we received two hundred and fifty pounds net cash flow from this property. Our mortgage payments are about four hundred and twenty pounds and uh, that we paid to G money. And um, we're gonna have a back end of 20,000 pounds. We didn't agree to pay anything to the seller. We just agreed to um, pay off G money, pay, pay off the arrears, and pay off the existing mortgage, and that is gonna be the purchase price. And okay, 42,000 net, uh, no costs, no tenants, no, no repairs. Very quickly, we, we have uh, just about seven minutes left, so, uh, I mean, so just going to very quickly explain uh, what a lemon is and then just go through this property. <coughs> lemon is a property basically that is in negative cash flow, negative equity. It could be for various reasons. It could be because your interest rate is too high. It could be because the service charge in ground rent are eating up your monthly cash flow. So um, I'm sure senior investors in this room 
you have two properties that you wouldn't like to keep in your portfolio. So this was a property that Doug didn't want to keep in his portfolio. <laughs> he bought it at the heart of the market, 2007, for 145,000 pounds, and he had a mortgage of 137. And guess what? The market got massively, and this property was only worth 99, last time I checked it online. And Doug told me, we said we have to get rid of this. It is in Manchester, I can't manage it, but we have to get rid of it. Well, sir, how much did you sell it for? I sold it for 143,999. That's probably that's worth 99. And the, tenant, the, the buyer moved in, exchanged contracts with me, and paid us 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds deposit. He's exchanged contracts, so he's now responsible for the service charge and the ground rent. I don't know. I no longer pay service charge, ground rent, or I, don't, I no longer maintain the property. Cash flow from this? 260 pounds a month. This property was 140 pounds in negative cash flow because Doug was paying the service charge. Doug was paying the ground rent, he was doing the maintenance, he was paying the estate agent, the property was in Manchester. Every time he had to let it, he had to call an agent, pay him, rent it, and that was a complete headache, so he didn't want anything. So no back-end on this one? No back-end. Well, <coughs> you have to be happy that you don't have back-end, because you would have written 40 grand check for the bank if you had to sell it today. So instead of writing £40,000 check, I've now made a profit of 20600 on a property that was in negative cash flow and negative equity. I have four of those in my portfolio. That's the first one gone. I've sold, actually I've sold two properties this year, uh, last year, sorry, in 2012 from my portfolio that were lemons. I have another three to go this year. How many of you ladies and gentlemen have lemons in your portfolio? after we show you how to get rid of them and make some decent money instead of losing money every month. As soon as there's a rate increase, a lot of people in this room will be in negative cash flow with their properties that they bought in the height of the market that were in city centres or purchased off plan using no money down deals, which most of us in the BNB market did and have done. So we're going to move on quickly to, um, we're going to show you that lemon because we haven't got time. We're going to show you some now, some later, which is a slightly different strategy, which is an advanced <coughs> strategy. And basically, it means that we purchase a property using a traditional buy-to-let mortgage, but we use, still use a no-money-down strategy, which I can't talk about this evening. But basically, we buy the property with, without putting any of our own money in, but we use a traditional buy-to-let mortgage. Um, and using um, a legal, as I said, uh, this no money down strategy, we call it a legal no money down strategy, um, and I'll talk to you about that afterwards if you'd like to see me at the back of the room. Um, we can pay up to full market value using this strategy because we only pay some of the money now and we pay some of the money later. Um, and the some money later comes from the bank. Uh, sorry, some of the, the upfront money comes from the bank, so it looks like that. Basically, we get the money from the bank, which is a mortgage, we give that to the buyer, the seller, sorry, the vendor, and then we agree that we'll give them that little bit later on. Usually that is 80 or 85% mortgage or 70, 75% mortgage, like just what um, mentioned um, on this mortgage update. So we get 85 or 70% or 75% buy to that mortgage, all that from the bank, give it to the um, seller, and we agree to pay the remaining over or at the end of a period of time. And we use a little technique or strategy known as nibbling where we, because of the time uh, that we take to pay this money, can be five years or seven years before the vendor gets that money. Quite often they come back to us earlier and say, that money that you owe me, could we have it a little bit earlier? And we say, of course you can, but we start to nibble that money back. So we say, okay, let's have an early settlement. So they may only receive half or quarter of the money that we owe them. Uh, and time uh, enables us to do that. Again, that's another strategy that we use within our uh, installment contract overall strategies. Uh, and that's something you can learn from us if you wish. So this is a... This is an example problem. The top, problem problem problem. the top bit's missing from this, right? The top bit's missing on this screen. So anyway, this is a uh, some now, some later. Uh, we purchased this property. Uh, this property was worth £170,000 and we agreed to pay the owner £100,000 now, £15,000 later. So we borrowed £127,500 based on a 75% buy to let mortgage. So what was the value of the property? 
170,000 pounds. So we've, we've got a 